What's going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson, and we're back in the studio, and we have a sweet treat for everybody today. Um, it is really sweet, and it's funny, too, because I'm fired up this morning, and I've got a great friend in the studio who I was just fussing to about some stuff going on, which I'm hoping doesn't end up having to become a future episode um, on the podcast. Um, what do you think, Jonathan? I'm hoping it doesn't. <laughs> So, yeah, me too. And the thing that's funny is, though, if it did, because people love drama, it would be, like, one of the greatest listened to shared, like, episodes because people love Also the most drama. censored. Oh, yeah. If, and that would be something. That would be something compared to an episode a couple weeks ago. Sorry, Mamu. But anyway, here we are today in the studio, and I have a longtime friend now at this point. Um, and someone that I've looked up to and loved their story and what they are doing and not just what they've done, but what they're doing. I've got the queen of cookie, the CEO, the founder, the head honcho, the boss of all things, cookies, texts, and edible tweets. Jeannie Fioka, welcome to the studio. Jeannie, how are you? I am great. Thanks for having me. I'm uh -oh. so excited to be here. We're so excited to have you in here and without fail. Like, it's so on brand. Like, I love it. She she texts me this morning and says, I'm coming for you. And she sends me a picture of this beautiful cookie with the Big Dog Podcast logo on it. It's got the icing and little sprinkles. It's all color coordinated. I mean, this is legit. This is the real deal. So, Jeannie, let's jump in and kind of talk about, like, what is cookie text? Like, because really it's a regional thing yes. right now. And so mm -hmm. a lot of our listeners will have no clue what's going on and they really need to um so let's talk to them about cookie text and and your background and how you ended up becoming the queen of all things cookie i don't know if that's me well but, you're close um really the con original concept was whatever you'd say in a text message we'll put it on a cookie cake okay and hand deliver it and so the original idea was what a cookie gram but and that was pre-Instagram when we yep. started. And so I was like, nobody's going to know the gram. I mean, that's a reference back to Telegram right, and yeah. stuff. And so I said, well, cookie text. And then the name was born. And so this is our 11th year. Of, so uh, We take your special message. We put it on our homemade cookie cake. We package it beautifully and hand deliver it for any occasion. So anything from, you know, Sorry, I wore the ass hat last night. Right. To yeah. uh, happy birthday to congrats on your whatever hundredth podcast. That's so cool. That's really fun. And it started out just being certain sizes, handwriting. Yes. With the icing. Yeah. All yeah. of the stuff to now, you guys can drop graphics. I mean logos. Yeah. On yeah. these things. Um when we launched, it was only gonna be text hand attacks that okay. are piped on there, but trying to draw attention to the brand, trying yeah. to get something going, I had to fall back on my cake decorating skills yeah. and start putting some pictures on there. Well, hand doing pictures, dyeing frostings to match, yeah. all that was a lot. And so eventually we evolved to edible printer, edible nice. image. And so um, that's helped a, a, a lot that's because cool. everything's gotta be scalable. Right. Everything's got to be, you know, what uh, there can't be something that only I can do. Right. If the goal is to step back or franchise or get sure. out at some point. But, That's cool. Um, yeah, it's just been great. I, it was. It came at a time when it was time for me to go back to work. Yeah. Um, I had had three boys at home and didn't want to go back to occupational therapy. I yeah, because th therapist was your background. Yes, yes. I worked in stroke and brain injury rehab. Okay. And never really loved it. Okay. But liked being in a helping profession, and so it came time to go back, and I went and river went to Riverside to, and they were ready to hire me right back, and I couldn't have gone screaming from the place any quicker. I was like, "This is not me." How long was that gap between you know full time working as an occupational therapist to not working and then going back to that? Ten years. So there's a ten year gap. Mm -hmm. You go back. And you're like, hell no, I cannot do this. Because what happened, and one of the things I, I tell people is everything you do matters and right. contributes to who you're becoming. 
And so many things I did as an involved at-home mom developed this creativity yeah. in my understanding of, oh, I like to be the giver. I like to be the go-between between, between yeah. niceness. All the creativity I didn't develop when I was younger because right. I was just trying to get through and, and survive. Okay. I mean, we both grew up. Yeah. And I don't think we had that different of, no. of background. Probably I mean, more similarities than differences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it came time to go back and I was like, oh, no, this can't be what I do. Yeah. And I had been making cakes for friends. And I started out doing them for my kids. Right. Slowly got better and better. People are like, oh, you did a nice job for the party. Can yeah. you do one for me? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And just never, you know, I if I was ever going to do it, I would have had to have been paid by the hour, not the job. Sure. Because sure. <laughs> I was so slow. Yeah. And so I realized when people said, can you make me a cake, that I kind of winced. But then they said, but I want one of your cookie cakes. And I had that whew, sense yep. of relief. And so... I realized if I'm going to do something with this creative baking yeah. side, then it needs to be cookie cakes. And so, you know, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of... That's cool. You know. So you go back to the occupational therapy, and you, or you didn't even start I back up. I didn't even up. start. You just, it was I the went process, running from the, interview. the path <laughs> that you were going into, like, I'm going to go back to it. So they're like, come on, we got you, we need you. And it's like, nope, I can't do it. There was that big life stop. Yes. Don't yes, make this left turn. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Absolutely. So you didn't make the left turn, and then it was like, okay, now what am I going to do? Exactly. Because, you know, those 10 years, I, I believe the story is, like, the boys are younger. You know, you were running them all around, doing the soccer thing, you know, whatever. That was the focus. Yeah, absolutely. And always has been. It's, yeah. Um, I know personally the most important thing I've done is the boys. Yeah. And that, um, and I, I, I hate to think of it, but I know that if they are currently 18, 19, and 21. Yeah. And I know if something happened to me tomorrow that they've got, they got this. Yeah. They got this. I, they'd miss me, but they've got right. the skills because I was there. So a lot of my brainstorming with what I would do was figuring out how to nestle it around being able to be present for the boys. Yeah, that's cool. And so something that, you know, I could get up and bake early. We could, you know, get things on the road by 10. Yeah. Things would be delivered by 2 o'clock when they're getting off the bus. And it it's worked. That's awesome. It's really worked. Um, more so than I ever expected. Yeah. In that what they've learned from it not happening overnight. Yeah. Because, oh, boy, did I want that Shark Tank. When everybody was saying Shark Tank, Shark Tank, oh, Shark Tank. Oh, for sure, yeah. Oh, I was like, I was just, yeah. And so that, you know, I, you could go on my blog and read right. my Shark Tank experience. But um, what they learned from watching yep. it slow, I mean, they it went from one flavor, one size, to now I think we have seven to eight flavors. You yeah, can combine awesome. to a multiple amount, seven sizes, add candles, add balloons. Right. And it was a couple years ago that our hoodies were trending uh -huh. with the kids at yep, the high school. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> I so know. I was like, I we know. went from being something they were like embarrassed to put on the first t-shirt to, oh yeah, that's my mom. Isn't that fun? Yes. Like, isn't that a cool thing? Like when that, and I love that because the thing you were talking about was like the boys have always been the number one thing. And even with developing and growing the business, the number one thing is the number one thing yes. and the, the focus and the time and the control of the time as you've built the business, you could do that without losing that investment in them and development of them as men and, and preparing them for, for, for life. And that's great. Cause that was a big thing for me when we transitioned, you know, I was running the church and then, you know, we, we started the dog thing and, when I ultimately made the decision to leave the church, it wasn't a lack of, I didn't run from the church. Like you ran from the occupational therapy, you know, thing, but there was a, a screaming sign for me. Life was saying your time, your time and the control of it. And that wasn't because of a bad setup at my job. I loved that job, mm -hmm. but time was the most precious thing. And it wasn't just my time. It was my time with the short period of time that I had with Logan and Kiki. Exactly. And what's amazing, too, 
is you make that choice and then kids are sponges. Yep. And what they've learned from watching you. Yeah. And probably more from the bad days than the good days. Oh yeah. That yeah. that it's they're they're sponges. And I'll, I tell the story of um, Eddie was in middle school, and you know how boys are in middle school. You can't you can hardly admit you have a f- female friend. Right. Yeah. But he you know he had female friends, and he came home from school one day, and he said, "Mom, did you hear that Tally's family their dog died?" And I was like, "Oh, Eddie, I'm so sorry. I I, I didn't yeah. I didn't know that." And he said. Do you think we could send her a cookie? Yeah. And when you've taught your kid yep. that a, compassion mm-hmm. and that sometimes you need to do a little extra something yep. to show people that what they're going through really yeah. matters and has hit you in your heart. Yeah. And, and and that they've absorbed that. And mm-hmm. it happened again this week or uh, last Monday. Andrew texted me from school and was like, Mrs. So-and-so lost her brother over the weekend. Can yeah. you send her a cookie? And I'm like, I won parenting. Yeah. No, <laughs> because th- they're thinking about that, but then they also are able to um, condition it to, hey, what my mom does, what our business as a family, because whether they're involved in it or not, and I'm making an assumption here, but um, I'm pretty sure they've had various – roles of involvement with the business over the last 11 years we, and we even drafted no, jmac it, that's time. right <laughs> i mean it's 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 the deal and and because when it's a family business particularly a startup there is a seat for everybody at any time you know with something that needs to be involved and so not only do they understand that part of the compassion and like man what could we do for them but they see the value in what you do professionally and how that can actually help a family, help an individual change, not fix the problem, but it changes the moment. Exactly. And for a fleeting moment, maybe they're not thinking about the loss. For a fleeting moment, a uh, a wife or a husband who's at work and, you know, they're trying to get through the day and in the back of their mind, they're thinking about the argument they had with their spouse you know, the morning on the way out the door, you know, or the night before, and uh, the cookie text shows up with an apology, right? Like that changes the the dynamic of the rest of that day. And I feel like so often people try to overcomplicate acts Mm -hmm. that really are the simplest of things to do. And you provide an outlet where people can say, I'm sorry. Or for the person who can't, express emotion right like i really care about you i love you you know i'm gonna be better like a lot of people can't verbalize these things but here's a fun easy way to communicate and it's as simple as the primitive idea that you matter Mm -hmm. everybody wants to know they matter yeah and that their existence on this earth is meaningful to somebody yep and so you put a cookie in their hand there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Like, I, I love the whole thing. Um, I, I just, I love it. And I love how it's scaled. I love how the 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 people that you reach and and um, deliver to, like, that has grown. Uh, when you, So when you started this, so 11 years ago, all right, mm-hmm. so you start 11 years ago. How... <laughs> How did people find you? How did you decide on, like, I'm going to do this size cookie? Like, how how did those things come about? That was um, the size cookie. All that was, like, trial and error. And that goes to the whole, uh, I left that interview at Riverside late April, early May. Got the idea for um, Cookie Text and mid-May. And we were launched October 3rd. And that's something I run into with people that are like always going to do something. Yeah. Going to do, going to do, going to do. Like Seth Godin says, put something out there. Right. Because I'm embarrassed now by our first product. Oh, when Lord. I look back yeah. at pictures, I go, <laughs> Look, I feel that. I look at our videos from like 2014 of me like training dogs and stuff I put on the internet thinking that I was just like killing it. And this is so fancy. Holy moly. i like, what? I, I'm so thankful we have a really big team and like tens of thousands of videos at this point that my stuff 
is buried. <laughs> yeah. 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 Quite honestly, anything that I've done before, like the year like 2019, 2020, I don't want to see it ever again. Oh, oh it's yeah. Never. Yeah. And yeah. isn't that so funny though? But you go in with like this 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 confidence and, and and that's great. And that's why you are where you're you're at now. And even when there's a lot of questioning and fear and anxiety and am I doing this right? There is still a confidence to take action and put yourself out there because you're confident enough to take whatever beating may come from it. Yeah. Yeah. It may not look perfect, <laughs> but it's going to taste really, yep. really good. And it's oh, going to yeah. be presented well. And it's, but how do you get better at things? Practice, <laughs> right. practice, practice. Absolutely. I've written on more cookies now than I've written on paper. Right. You know? And so it, it's kind of funny because I chicken scratch a thank you note to somebody, but my cookie writing is right. amazing. So a lot <laughs> of like brainstorming that summer and trying to find like the right stuff because yeah. I knew that I won't, I will say that occupational therapy has served me well. Yeah. The education I got, so much of that is about um, breaking things down into the smallest parts yeah. and knowing first this step and then that step. And then, that. And you know, it's not like, right. like a buffet table. You yeah. got to have the forks and the knives and the plates here. And then you got to have the food, right. you got to have the tongs and, and, and setting up a business is not that different. Agreed. And so, um, it was finding the right box and the right pan and the pan that was going to go from the fridge to the oven to the right. customer to cut out steps. And and so it was a lot of brainstorming. The big money went into the website because that was going to be my storefront. Right. Initially, we only delivered um, probably about four miles, okay. roughly. It was hard to fix the website so yeah. it would serve that. But the first customers, I, I love this were the ones that this was back before Facebook was pay to play. Yeah. And you didn't have to, you know, really hustle to get anything seen. You mm -hmm. can say, I'm Jeannie, the soccer mom, and I'm launching a business at the end of the summer. Yeah. Stay tuned. My first customers were the ones that I had led chess club with their kids. Okay. Or I'd led children's liturgy or I had been the de den leader. I had been, those people had a history of, when Jeannie says she's going to do something, she's going to do it. Yep. And so I'm willing to bet my 20 bucks. Yeah, that's that, cool. And, and so everything matters. Everything yeah. you do matters, and it's all building up to people having faith in your word and yeah. you, what you're doing. And so my first customers were Facebook friends. That's the fun. first time I got a customer that I didn't know, I wept, wept, wept. Isn't that <laughs> like, weird? <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing? You're like, like, you're so excited about it. And like, I remember sitting like in the living room and I'd step away from the dinner table or whatever. I'd go sit in the living room. I'd take a phone call because somebody was calling or someone had emailed in inquiring about training. And I remember not in the, I mean, I say the early days. I mean, we're eight, this is our eighth year. Um, but Still to this day, I get so excited when someone signs up with us. Um, just as much as I did back then, I'm like, oh man, they chose us. Yes. Of all the options they had to fill this need that they have, a problem they have, and whether it's dogs, whether it's cookies, whether it's plumbing, whether it's whatever, every business started out as a small business. And People, I, I feel like, lose track of the part where, like, when you wept when that first unknown client came in, that, that, that those tears, I have to imagine, were a combination of excitement, of fear, of pride, of hope, yeah. right? And, like, a little bit of grit and that determination, like, this might work. Yes. This legitimately might work. And you, you, you have that moment... Like if I'm you and I walk into the cookie kitchen in the morning and I see the freaking printer just dumped across the floor overnight, you'd post something on Instagram or Facebook the other day. I was so hype. And I know you sell a lot of cookies, but I was still so hype about that. You know, when we have a, a great sales day, like I'm so excited about that. I'm like, people trusted us to fill that need. Yeah, but you did a whole episode that, that fundamentally everything stems from gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I don't take a single order for granted. I don't nope. take a single customer for granted. I don't take my employees for granted. It, it's just 
thankful and grateful. And, I, you know, it's in the seat of my soul. Yeah. It's just to be so thankful because what's the alternative? You well, know, the alternative is a really sad life. Why do people lose that, though? Because you know a lot of business people. You know a lot of small business owners. You know a lot of people that have grown their businesses. And I'm sure you know a lot of people that have lost their businesses. Mm-hmm. I do not think the majority of these CEOs, of these founders, stay focused on that gratitude piece. I don't think they get excited today as much as they did in the beginning. Now, it's a different animal. Like, what I'm dealing with... I mean, you knew me when we started this thing in the backyard. Mm-hmm. We're, we're set up a little different now. Yeah, a little and, bit. And I would say my stress and my reactions and stuff are, have all exponentially grown as the business has grown. But damn, if I still don't get so excited when someone chooses us, it's not just a transaction. Just like a cookie isn't a transaction with, with you guys. Do you think that... Um uh, sometimes that authentic gratitude is born from hardship and mm-hmm. having known the darker side. I mean, I lost both my parents very young. Yeah. I've had to, f- you know, I, I've suffered some some blows. Yeah. And y- you can dwell on what I don't have yep. for the rest of my life, or I can dwell on what I do have for yeah. the rest of my life. And that's why you'll never find me driving down the road with an in memory of yeah. somebody sticker on my car. Cause I right. don't want to be reminded every day of what I don't have. Yep. I want to focus each day on what I do have yep. and who I want to become. Yeah. I love that. And I think you're right. I, I, I think that that's a, a really, a really, really good point. That could be why people, a lot of people don't stay in that moment. They're hung up on what something might have been or they they get lost. Because for me, if you as a business owner get lost in the process of the growth and development and lose the reason you started this whole thing to begin with, like you should have hit pause somewhere back down the path. With a lot of people, though, they don't realize they're losing that. They're just trying to keep up with what is seemingly successful. And as they're chasing that and just trying to keep the wheels from falling off, they lose themselves and the why along the way. I don't think it's intentional, but I think it has to be super intentional for people to decide this isn't fun anymore. Right. Or like I'm, I am even without subconsciously, I'm taking for granted. These people are signing up for me to fix a plumbing issue they have or whatever it may be. Um, You know, they, 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 it is a conscious decision to not go back and fix that part. And whereas I think it is not a conscious decision to get caught up in the hoopla and the, and the pace of the growth. Right. Yeah. Because you, it, it's hard because you're learning. I've, I've made this comment recently because we're dealing with some growing pains and stuff. And I, people are looking at me for all the answers and stuff. I said, Hey guys, uh, I'm Josh and never in my life, if I ran a dog training business this size. <laughs> yeah, I'm new here too. <laughs> right. And, and the jacked up part is, I, I I don't know how many other people have for me to go to. And that's a blessing and it's a curse. Yeah. And so we're going to have to figure this out together. Yeah, and that's when you get back to that reductionistic, re- yeah. reductionistic thing. What's the best next decision I can make. Mm-hmm. What's the best next step? Now, I think you have a little bit of apples and oranges because you have such a broader scope yeah. than I do at this point. Sure. But a lot of times it comes down to what's the best next decision Agreed. I can make. And so, I don't know. And I think, too, we, going back to the whole gratitude and stuff, it was probably ninth grade science class phoebus high connie barrett we finished some activity and she looked over and said that was fun yeah and that thought had just never <laughs> occurred to me <laughs> right that, yeah that was fun and l- learning that lesson to name it yeah name fun name joy and so many people want kids to know exactly what they're doing when they get out of college for yeah. the rest of their life and what i say to them is figure out when you're in class and you're enjoying it yeah. And it's not torture and you're not just waiting for the 100%. Because you can make a living doing anything that you find joy in. Absolutely. And change that definition of what is the world deems to be a successful life and you know what what does that look like? And when when you stop chasing that piece 
and do pay attention. Gosh, that's so good. What you just said, that is so good. What is what catches your attention that you're not worried about it ending? Yeah. Like, or you're 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 dreading it ending because you want to keep doing this, learning about this, rather than you got chemistry coming up next and you can't stand it. Well, guess what? I'm pretty sure your future doesn't fall into chemistry yeah. and science, right? But if there's something about this this earth science or atmospherics, whatever, it's got you fired up and you're just geeking out about it. You can't stop learning about it, reading about it. Hey, here's your sign. This might be something that yeah. innately you're passionate about or want to do. Or Logan, you know, Devin and I had a, he's a junior. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, college, school. And we started talking about last year. And I've always been, hey, look, I don't care if you go to school or not. Like, you know, you're going to be a good person. You're going to be a reliable person. You know, you need to do something that you care about, what you like. Evan's like, he needs to go to school. He needs to be a good person. <laughs> he needs to be reliable. He needs to do stuff that he likes. But, like, college was not negotiable. Mm -hmm. And he pushed back. And I'm not relying on a 17-year-old child to ultimately make that decision. But I think you got to let them weigh in a little bit. I'm like, what do you want to do, buddy? He's like, I want to work with the dogs. I want to be in our business. I want to learn about marketing. I want to learn how to train. I want to learn about the daycare. I want to learn about this. I want to, I was like, how do I justify four years of college when I know in six months of chasing us around, he's going to learn more than he'll learn in 10 years of school. Exactly. And, you know, so it's okay. If this is really what you want to do or you think that you want to do, let's go that path. And if you change your mind, guess what? You're 20 years old and you can go to college or you plug away with some classes at Thomas Nelson while you're working. Mm -hmm. And if you realize I'm unbearable and you don't really <laughs> want to be around dad, <laughs> you know, you can go into this. But as we opened up and allowed for those conversations, and I screw up in plenty of areas with my kids, but I will tap myself on the back, pat myself on the back with this one where I feel like we are leaning towards a win here. You know, the conversations that have come about since we gave that openness mm -hmm. to dialogue is blowing my mind. He came to me a week ago with some things and I don't want to put it on here yet, but it's like his thoughts and how he sees things playing out and, and what he envisions for himself. And I'm so fired up. Yeah. I'm so fired up about it. I was 18, 20. I had no idea what marketing was. You told me you were going to major in marketing. Right. I had no clue what that is. Right. I love it. I love that part of the business. I yeah. enjoy it. I am good at it. And so it's interesting to me that, you know, we, we want these kids to make a $100,000 four-year bet at 18 on what they want to be for the rest of their life. Yeah. I didn't know what yeah. I loved to do till I was, you know, 38, 40. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tremendous point because people talk about, like, student loans and things of that nature. It's like you're loaning, like, twenty to $80,000 to, like, an 18-year-old, and you want right. that money back as soon as they graduate? Seems well, like a flawed system. To right. Me. And the oh. thing is, they get you on the 20 to 80 K, but then you got the way that interest works and how it stacks and how it compounds. And like uh, the last couple of years, a lot of people haven't been paying on their stuff because the government's like, hey, you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about these payments, you know, and, but it, it adds up so quick. And the one thing I think that is contributing to people opening their minds is I do think there is a push more for vocational yes. tech, find your way. There's so many more ways to make a living yep. and you, you couldn't be an influencer. You couldn't, nope. you weren't a content creator. You, all those things didn't exist when we were coming they about. Didn't. And so I think there's a genuine shift from what I can see with regard to, um, that pressure to start a family in your early twenties. Right. I think people are getting much closer to that 30 cusp before they feel like oh uh, yeah yeah before they feel like okay it, it's time and i i think it's good people are living longer so let's give them longer to right. mature and develop figure it and out figure it out screw up without the kids and then fix you it you know my oldest is so worried about graduating and getting a job yeah. i'm like jimmy you have to support you yep that's all that's all and we're not going to kick you to the curb right away. Right. I mean, yeah. we want you to grow and bloom and figure out a roommate situation yeah. and get the heck out. But by the same token, we're not going to put you out on the street as yeah. long as you're doing something to be productive. It doesn't have to be what you're going to do for the rest of your life. You only have to support you. Right. And, and that's different than 40 years ago. 
because 100%. you know you get out of college and you're married to Mary Sue and yeah. y'all are having 2.5 kids and you got to get a mortgage because that's what everybody's doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny because I think about like, so Devin and I, I mean you know we started dating in high school, went to college together. Um, she's smarter than me. She graduated a year early. I had to do a victory lap. I graduate. <laughs> we're married two weeks later. Okay. We spend our honeymoon looking at law schools because you're looking at a lawyer. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> in case you didn't know, Jonathan, um, you know, spend a honeymoon looking at law schools. On the way back, I realized I, there's no way I can do school anymore. School's so hard for me. I'm terrible at school. It doesn't bring it, me joy. No, <laughs> zero joy. And now I know for a fact there's three more years. It's going to be exponentially worse than what I just went through. Mm -hmm. Like, it, no, no. And that was a decision that we made as a, a unit. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of like, uh, okay, now what are we going to do? Because we just signed on an apartment. She's getting a job transfer to where I was going to school. I mean, we were committed. And I checked it out. And I thank God that I did. But my entire life, it's like, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a lawyer. Why? Why? Why the heck? Why? I don't know why. Because in my mind, growing up, they were, they were successful. They had financial means. You know, all these things, right? But you're you a lawyer. Know, what do you mean? You're a lawyer. I'm a UVA certified doctor. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I, I grew up with some band-aids around that's, the house right. and thought that's what I wanted to do. But yeah, yeah. but you know, it's just yeah. this crazy thing. Well, and it's like, you got to be willing to to be okay with it not being the answer and or having the answer. And so we had a whole lifetime of finance and real estate and that all blew up. And then we created another lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the thing is... I don't know 10 years from now, the, the dogs are it. Mm -hmm. no I would more, No more gold watch after uh, working uh, somewhere uh, for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and here's the thing. It's like, I believe that it will be. Mm -hmm. I believe that all these things happen to get me on the path that we're on. Um, but at the same time, if life says, hey, you, you got to make a, a, a turn, I'm not scared to make that turn. And I think that, so many people, because of what is said that you're supposed to do, right? Everyone's scared to go left mm -hmm. rather than just staying in that funnel and that path. And I agree with you. I think the, the trades are being promoted so much better than they've ever been. Now this whole, it's almost gone too far, in my opinion. This whole entrepreneurial thing is, you know, anybody, can, well, that's what I, that's what I am. It's like, well, what? what is that exactly how how is that and with social media anything can be presented anything can be fronted and it's created all these dynamics and so it, it isn't you get out of school you get married you have the kids you buy the house our closest friends late 30s early 40s they start having their kids Devin and i we're like we're three years out from <laughs> yeah. see ya you know we're on the road and my godson's four you know i mean it's just this crazy and we all went to school together but they went corporate path mm -hmm. and focused in on that. Devin and I flailed around trying to figure it out and, and do our deal and had the kids early. And it's just, it's finding that, that spot and that comfortability where you're okay with the decisions you make. And at the end of the day, you're not just okay with it, but you own it. Exactly. And like, exactly. that's what I've seen happen with cookie text as it's grown. Mm -hmm. And I think about, and you mentioned, you know, there's, yeah, the trial and the error and the processes and the policies. And you got people working for you. And, you know, and as you grow in the team, and I know here with me, I change how we do stuff all the time because we're evolving. Yes. And that can be frustrating for people like, well, Josh loves to change stuff. No, it's it's necessary. Yeah, is what we're doing working for us? I mean, right. there's always an after action, that after Valentine's, decision, right? after all that stuff. Yeah. Because I'm telling you what, when COVID hit, we exploded. Mm -hmm. We blew up. And if I hadn't done those after action that yep. we really need to be able to uh, computerize how this route is done, we really need to figure out how to be able to scan these boxes. Yeah. We need automatic order printing. Da, 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 da. There's no way we could have handled the volume. Does and Valentine's Day of 2022 go down the exact same way as Valentine's Day 2015? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got to change. No. How many? How many orders? How many cookies? Did you know how many cookies you guys put I out know how last many week? Orders or the, on this week? Monday, there were 115 online orders. <laughs> but that 
calculate to like several have like multiple right, like yeah. a six pack or a four pack or whatever wow um and then there are offline orders that um are like so business to business right yeah and, and so there are a handful of those but just the logistics of getting 115 yeah. things delivered different places it's wild and and having systems in place systems in place and then knowing when to change those systems because yeah. they're not really working and yeah i remember so like trying so hard to get the labels printed for the cookie boxes yeah. and the web person at the time was like mm, can't do it can't do it and i'm like i can flip and go to the elementary school type in my name it takes my pictures and spits out a label right. this is doable yeah and sometimes you just have to say this this person it, is it, not, it's not able working. to do it yep. for me but i will find somebody that that can yep and and making those changes and those choices are hard it's but hard. that's the innovator that's the idea person like because you in your mind you're like if, if something applies to something else and this is why you guys have done so well because you are unwilling to accept something that you believe can be done and the reason it ends up being unique is you're willing to put in the time the resources the effort in figuring it out and not just settling because someone says Jeannie we can't print that sticker for you. But what goes hand in hand to that is there are very few unique problems. Uh -huh. I've had very few problems in business that somebody hasn't had before. Yep. And so I don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. I need to find the resource. Yep. You know, it, because I'm not that special. You know, somebody has Thank had you. this problem before me yes. and they have a solution and there's a plug-in that's going to do X, Y, and Z because yeah. somebody before me has needed it to do this. And the routing program, you know, I didn't need to reinvent that wheel. Yeah. There's a, um, I have a side interest in doing some business coaching and a subscription type thing oh, awesome. and fell into my lap. There's basically a whole platform that just set up mm -hmm. to plug me into their model yep. and my information they get a tiny cut and they figure out all the computer programming all yeah. that kind of stuff that and i'm like oh that's totally worth it no new problems no, no new, new problems. problems i don't need to in invent this i don't need to invent everything from scratch <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. but you know it's so funny because you talk about that like you know there, there's very few unique problems and issues and i made the comment like hey i've never ran a dog training business the size of what we're doing right now so two years ago, I Apex, you may have heard me talk about from yes. time to time. That's why I go to Texas every month, and people who follow the show know about it well. But that room, I'm in that room because it is a resource, and there's someone in there that I've had problems that I can help them address that they think are unique and they're not. And there's a lot of people in that room who are way ahead of me who have had problems that rather than me thinking it's unique to me just because it's dogs, it's not dogs, it's business. Mm-hmm. And how did you navigate this area? What did you do when you started dealing with this problem, with the staff size of X? With the, like These are things that, as long as you're open to conversations and learning and not thinking that you have to fix it all yourself, that's where the answers lie. Yeah, and I think one thing, and I don't know why it's rung and stayed in my head so much, is I think there's going to have to be a little bit of a buffer with the COVID generation coming into business. Yeah. Because from what I'm hearing from lead engineers, lead people like that, they say, you know, these poor, these new employees are coming in, they're working on one assignment from home. Yeah. They don't have the benefit of being in the shop and learning that Joe Blow had that same problem 20 years ago. That's right. There's so much to be learned from others mm -hmm. and to be learned in community. And I think that it's going to be a big blip in our radar. Yeah. That, that there's going to be a COVID curve with regard to people relearning how to learn from each other or learning initially how to really yeah. um, network and solve problems together. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And um, I think we're already starting to see that for sure. And one of the, like my biggest concern when, when all that crap hit, early 2020 my biggest concern wasn't the business we were in the middle of a huge construction construction project whatever these were all just things right like it's either gonna flop or it's gonna go and we'll either go bankrupt or we won't i mean yeah. it, either way my wife loves me my kids love me we're gonna be okay yeah. my biggest concern 
I'm like, Logan's not in school. He's a freshman. He's not in school right now. This is when you kind of figure girls out. This is when you figure out relationships. This is when you get your heart broken. This is when that girl says, nah, I'm not interested in going out with you. Mm-hmm. This is when friends you've had since kindergarten it, kind of disappear. And some from kindergarten, those friendships get stronger. And I was like, holy crap. Socially, I'm terrified with this. And Kiki was in middle school. And that's a big time too, developmentally. But I was more worried about Logan. And I'm like, how long is this crap going to go on? Like, he's got to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. How do you yeah. figure it out without yeah. doing? Yeah. And that was really scary to me. Yeah. And the relationships with teachers and classmates and collaboration. And I know everybody did the best they could to, to figure it out and bounce. And I'm, I'm proud of so many things that businesses and schools implemented very quickly with no roadmap for it. I am really proud of a lot of those things. But at the end of the day, that social development, um, I think it's so much greater as to what 10 years from now looks like and 15 years from from this very specific period of time. And I think the having the awareness that it is and can be an issue yeah. is important, but it goes back to that gratitude. I yep. can't sit here for the rest of my life and be so upset that Eddie was robbed of that last soccer season right. in his senior year yep. and be, feel bad about that every day. I can focus on, oh my gosh, they had the best drive through graduation ever. <laughs> right, that's and cool. then my kids are healthy. I didn't lose anybody to COVID, but, but, yeah. but there's a, a way of a balance of having an awareness, yeah. but not a poor me. Or a poor oh, Logan, yeah. or a poor, you can't right. prove forever that Logan missed his freshman year. I can't yeah. prove forever that Eddie lost, because it, it happened to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 and yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, let's make this, you know, as normal as possible. What did he start doing? <laughs> Dude started playing golf a lot more, started working on that, because there was flexibility with school. He was still going to, you know, church and going to his group as that stuff opened back up met a girl they've been dating for like nine ten months now and you know she's great and who knows where that lies you know and how it ends up really funny though like as you start to see parallels between them and like Devin and I like in high school I'm like oh babe this is real weird like this is so weird um but it's it's all working out fine yeah but I think a big reason that you talk about the perspective and the awareness most of the people I know that things are working out fine for chose to make it work out fine. And whether that's the gratitude, whether that's taking action, whether that's what's the next decision um, that you talk about, those are the people that it's working out fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and then a lot of people who were frozen in indecision Mm -hmm. or can't get over what didn't happen, Yeah. right? They're still stuck there, you know, with it. Um, Talk to me a little bit about so you're out here slinging cookies, all right? You guys are baking these things from scratch daily. Mm-hmm. Devin ran around the cookie kitchen for a while yeah, with y'all. Yeah, she did. You know, doing that, and she really enjoyed that. It was a lot Devin of fun. Got Kiki during a that times. time. We got Kiki in there helping. She loved it. Um, both my angels were in the cookie kitchen. Um, you got your delivery people. You know, you got your systems, your processes, all this stuff, and and in year. You just had your 11th Valentine's Day, Mm -hmm. which is, that is your biggest day of the year, right? Okay. Absolutely. What is, now that cookie text is very much a thing and it's viable and it's grown and you've been able to make use of new trends and, and, and add on features and, and stuff. What do you see for, for cookie text? Like what's the next step for the edible tweets? Yeah, I think I've always envisioned it as a franchise. I'm not exactly sure how I'll I'll get there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll start as like another location, sure. another something like that. And I've always kind of um, balanced it with the boys. Yeah. So Andrew graduates um, Tab High this year, yeah. and so that'll be my last one out. And so it's kind of time to poop or get off the pot, yep. you know, yeah. and, and to really either blow it up or not. Do I sell it? Do I do what, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I do think that from the initial branding, the initial logo, it changed my mindset of, oh, this is something I can throw up a shingle here to, oh, this is a brand. This is, this is a logo I can build a real business off. 
and and that awareness of branding and how yeah. that kind of stuff. And so, I I think it's got limitless potential yeah. at this point. I mean, and I have always had in my head a little vision of a you know the cookie text logo on the corner of a street on a building, sure. a flagship store. Yeah. But I don't know what model it'll take. I don't know if the, it will end up being uh, you know that edible arrangements type model where yeah. you can walk in and get something or you can order. Online, online yeah or if i'll continue to cater to people like me that uh, want to have something that they can do out of their house yeah and i awesome. have a whole team that navigates whatever the local laws are right. regarding that because that's one of people that have bakeries from their home that's their biggest hurdle right is zoning what, and zoning compliance and laws inspections and, and, and all, all that. yeah 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 and, and it's different everywhere yep and so i i just think it's potential is limitless i love it um and i think that i i'm the biggest hindrance and sure. i think i've had a foot on the brake uh, partially out of fear partially out of the boys and yeah. and i think a f- girlfriend said to me years ago she said you know you think it's important you're home when they're young it's more important when they're coming home from high school yeah and, and she stands by that yep. and there have been some challenges that I thought I am so glad that I can drop everything I'm doing at 10 a.m. and 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 be there be present. because I'll tell you those boys have no doubt that I'll show up for them. Yep, and and that their mere existence in the world is all I need. Yep, it's not based on productivity, which I think entrepreneurs right. run yes. into is that a very productivity based mindset. Like if I'm not producing, then uh, what's my worth? Yeah, and. To be able to teach your kids that all you have to do is be a soul yep. in this world, and, yeah, and that's that's good. So, I just I, I'd love to blow it up or find a partner and yeah. blow it up together. That's um, cool. There's some interesting things coming. We are, we're about to get a billboard on the side of 64. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Go on, girl. Yeah. I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah. So, and I love opportunities like this. Yeah. So this is fantastic. I love chatting. I could talk about cookie text forever. And Look, I could talk about cookie text and just <laughs> business and the same thing. Like it's it when you get your passion. When you're lucky enough and disciplined enough to pay attention to getting your passion in alignment with your purpose, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to steal from anything, it is limitless. Yeah. I mean, you can just run with it. Um, Sean Aker studies happiness, mm-hmm. and he has a quote I really like, and he says, happiness is the joy you feel as you're working towards your potential. Yeah. And I think that's that's it. It's hanging on my fridge because those moments of joy and that sense that I'm continuously trying to be the best version of myself and yep. put the best product out there and be a good boss and a good human. Yeah. It's funny that you said that because the episode that dropped today while we're in the studio recording, actually, you know, I reference, like, I want to be the greatest. And it's not the greatest dad of all time it's not the greatest like entrepreneur of all time i don't feel this desire to be like the greatest husband of all like i don't need any of those accolades i need though the people that matter in my life that when it's all said and done to all believe at their core damn he was the greatest version he could have been of himself of josh Wilson. like that's it yeah. that's it and like my dad could not have been a greater dad to me because I'm not being compared to other dads. Mm-hmm. I want Devin to know when I'm <laughs> no, when we're no longer physically together, whether she departs or I depart, because that's a reality of what will happen. Mm-hmm. There is not, there is so much joy in knowing he was the greatest husband that he could have been to me. There's nothing that he could have given me more of. And it's not of stuff and things like yeah. of me, like of my heart, yeah. my core, what it can be. And so this episode that dropped is I'm talking about my dislike of myself in the physical form and what I've allowed myself to become and be because I'm not I'm misrepresenting my potential. Yeah. And I've caught clips and I've caught right? clips of a few things lately. So I know what yeah. your current. And so is. it's just like a weird thing. And it, it's like. Get your, get your focus, 
you know, and, and figure out like how you do become that greatest version of yourself. It's not about anyone else. It's about yourself. Have you read or listened to Atomic Habits by mm -hmm. James Clear? Yes. Yeah. Every action I take is a vote for the type of person I want to become. Yep. And consistency over in intensity. Yeah. And so I, I'm not knocking the 75 hard, but yeah. that's intensity. Oh, it's and, super and, intensity. And, yeah. And that, you know, you sign up for a marathon that's intensity. If you say I'm going to go out and I'm going to run more days each week than I don't. Yep. And even if it's only around the block, yeah. in three years, I'm a runner. That's so right. Who am I? I want yeah. to be a, a fit person. Yeah. And you work toward the person yep. you want to become rather than I want to run a marathon. Yeah. And I think that to that point, it's so smart. And that comes back to business too. People see what they, the, you talked about the nervousness of starting the business, right? Yeah. And it's because you're like, it's a business. Yes. And that's so intimidating. And if I was like, I need to lose 80 pounds, that's so intimidating. That's so intimidating. And that's why, and I've always attacked it that way it, it, from a very immature aspect. And this time, the time, the last time, mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about today and what I need to do. And it's the same way I approach my business. And, you know, Lord willing, like the business continues to be successful. Lord willing, my wife continues to love me. My kids continue to love me. And, you know, and, and, and I just focus on the day and being that yeah, best and, in the day. It doesn't matter. And then, boom, you wake up and 11 years later, you're pumping out more cookies than you've ever pumped out in your life. Yeah. And you, you sit there on the couch and you think to yourself, I want to be a, a fit person that can pick up her grandkids. Yeah. And so what does a fit person do? Does she stay here on the couch and eat this bowl of Chex Mix and watch this right. reality show? Or does she go for a walk around the block Yep. and, you know, listen to something that might make yeah. her feel better about life? You know, because it's every decision. Yep. Every, every decision. single one of them. And it's not 75 days of decision nope. or one marathon worth of decisions. Right. It's It's just little tiny incremental choices. In every aspect of your life exactly exactly it's so simple yeah and so terribly difficult and i'm telling you <laughs> and once you're 40 it's yeah. so much about what you put in your gob you know oh, everybody's sure. like you can yep. do all the exercises in the world but if you don't do the fork downs yep right yeah my so so it's so funny <laughs> that we landed here but like so kiki has, is doing travel volleyball Right, three years ago she was complete trash. Now she's captain of her school team and captain of her travel team, and it's it's a great team. Go she's TV. developed her her travel. I never thought we'd be like the travel sport parents. I thought my son would play football, and you know my daughter would do whatever, and Logan plays golf, and Kiki does volleyball. But they have a tournament this weekend, and up in Northern Virginia. And I told Dev, I was like, babe, I may just drive up Sunday and drive back. And that's not typically my MO, but I'm still early into getting these certain habits developed. And it's a three-day tournament in a hotel. I'm not, for me to, to maintain and be successful, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to be really transparent. I said, babe, I think I just need to drive, like get my workout in Sunday morning, drive up, drive back after the day. I don't think I can do the three days. I said, it's gonna throw off my routine. I'm a creature of habit and there's a lot of my habits I'm very confident in. Mm -hmm. These current habits that I'm working on turning into habits, I'm not yet. Like it is a big decision every single day to make a good choice. Mm -hmm. And you know, I thought she was gonna push back a lot with that. And and she's like, no, babe, I get it. I'm like I get it. You know, you should ask your mom if you know she wants to ride up with you on Sunday because I know she didn't want to do the long drive and whatever, but she'd probably ride with you. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. You know, Devin could be like the poster child for a supportive wife and mother. No, I've never seen is, anything like it in she, my life. She's in my angel. life. She, and I'm <laughs> such a pain in the ass. I'm such a pain in the ass. And she's, she is, she's an angel. The first step is knowing you have a problem. Just. Right. Yeah. No, legit. Like that's, that's what it is. And it, it, I, I've never in my life known of two people who could be more different, but God has seen fit to keep us together and in the same trajectory and um, and to grow together, it is the weirdest thing. Well, it's a beautiful thing. I've only been in the same room as both of you a handful of yeah, times. Yeah, sure. But your love is palpable. Thank you. In your pr and when you're both in the same room, it's a, a 
greater than the sum of its parts. It has a life of its own. I receive that. And I, I, fe- I feel that because when we're not in the same room, like I feel that. I That's feel that beautiful. there's, there's no place I'd rather be. That's beautiful. And it's a weird season right now. Cause we're actually spending a little more time apart than we like ever have. And, and I kind of had this three day, two night rule personally. Like if I got to travel, like I'm not doing more than two nights. I just don't like being away from Devin and the kids. I just don't like it. And life has made it to where hey, it's kind of a, a deal. Last month we went, I think it was 11 days mm. without seeing each other, which people are like, I haven't seen my husband in a year. He's military and all these things. I'm not discounting any of that. I'm not it, built it, that way though. I'm not built that way. And it's just different. And we, we would not have made those decisions for that lifestyle. Cause I know that I wouldn't have been good in it. And like, we're just not built that way. And it, it's not like this weird, like dependency issue. It's not that at all. It's just, I feel like I'm at my best when there's proximity. And, uh, I mean, if I got to miss out on certain things and, you know, yeah, do that, I it's caught tough. a song as I was leaving the house today and I never had heard it before. It was like, um, something to the effect of, you know, I like myself better when I'm around you. Like I like who I am when I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. And so to have a partner that brings out the better, your best self or that, makes you feel encouraged that you want to make them proud yeah. but yet you know i remember i watched a clip of her thing and she she was like yeah i could have left you then but yeah, it, yeah but she should have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that sense that they're going to stick by your side in good yeah. times and bad times and, yep. and that but you know that sense that um this is bigger than us this love is bigger than just you and me this it, and after so many years yeah it, it's it, fun it, this is our 20 year this summer is 20 Wow. years and i'm really excited about that and it's really fun i don't know what we're going to do we got a couple of things on the table but you know it's good but look she i can take you up another huh? active volcano yeah, look this woman <laughs> oh my god i was so angry about that i that's a really funny story but yeah i was so angry about that and probably she will and we've got some stuff but um yeah so blessed and it is the, the great thing that's about it is adventures or no adventures Success or no success, money in the bank, no money in the bank, you know, known or unknown. None of that changes anything. None of it changes anything. And that's where I come back to. If you're, if you're lucky enough to be disciplined enough to get your passion in alignment with your purpose, none of this, it, it, you just do. Yeah. Right. You just yeah. act. You just make decisions that keep yourself on that, on that path. And, you know, win or loss, it's not who you are. You know, it's you're learning. Yeah. You're learning. Yeah. And you make changes and, and you do. But that is the one constant in my life is, is Devin Ray. So, and she loved her time in the cookie kitchen. Oh, she always yeah. did. Yeah, I almost, I almost threw a Mayday flag on Monday, but I, I got <laughs> Well, somebody. you know, it's always the And here's the thing. <laughs> if, if you knew that, if, if you ever did that, you know she'd show up in a heartbeat. And it was so funny. I meant to send a text to Katie Yergin yesterday because we have a, a one of our admins we have sent out to texas to cover some train she's also one of our trainers to help us out with a, a shortage we have out there and so we have some tasks that we need help with and devin always is willing to jump in or whatever so i text katie hey you know do we need to get devin involved for for the month and you know taking on some of these tasks and responsibilities um you know what are your thoughts well, i sent it to devin i didn't send it to katie and i was like <laughs> So that wasn't meant for you. I don't know that we need you to do anything. I was just talking to Katie and this is where we're at. But she is that constant. She is that person who will step in and help. And it's awesome. And it it's indicative of you and people that she enjoys being around. And, you know, your leadership and with what you're trying to do. And there's purpose behind it. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm a big fan of Cookie Text. And I'm a bigger fan of you. And I just think you're tremendous Thanks. and take that for whatever that's worth. Uh, my little opinion, but it's, it's my weekly walks with J Max mom. That keeps me. Grounded. That's another one. <laughs> that's a, that's another individual that is out of this world. Yeah. And, um, I think all three of us at this table can agree that Angie Mac is a real one, a special one. And, um, there never has been, nor will there ever be another one like angie mac i know so she's a beast certified (laughs) (laughs) it's been signed off on guys well look Jeannie, what is the best way 
for people to learn more about Cookie Tax, learn more about you, and particularly if they're here in Hampton Roads, they really need to, to put some time. How do they find you? CookieText.com, CookieText.com, CookieText.com. And then Easy. on Instagram, it's CookieText. On Twitter, it's CookieText LLC. On right. Facebook, it's CookieText, Cookie Cakes, because we needed to get the cookie cakes yep. in there to help, you know. But yeah. Yeah, cookie if you Google Cookie Text, that's going to be us. There you and go. And unfortunately, if you click on images when you do that, it's probably going to be a lot of my face. <laughs> But that's, that's when that's you're funny. doing something right with branding is when you kind that's of right. become synonymous with your brand. I there think. it is. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you. I can't thank you enough for coming in here today and sharing, you know, your story and talking business and talking life and talking perspective and talking positivity. You're, you're, you're amazing. And Thanks. we're so thankful that you came in to hang out and hopefully we have you come in again. And particularly if that means you're going to bring another cookie. Oh, I'll be back anytime. And I'm just even flattered you ask. So right. always take the time to chat with you. Well, we appreciate you. Look guys, if this uh, show was helpful for you, you know, share it, um, tag somebody who might learn something. Um, if, you need a cookie and you're in Hampton Roads, you need to go to cookietext.com and get that order in. Um, whether it's individual or you're a business, you're looking uh -huh. for unique gifts to, to share with clients and vendors or, or thank yous. Like they do it all and, and it's tremendous. And so, in such a short turnaround time. Oh yeah, I mean, they're quick with it and it's gonna be delivered and it is a special unique gift. I've never, ever, ever seen someone get one of these and be upset about it. So it, it's a great surprise, no matter the occasion or situation. Keep it profanity-free, and um, you're good to go. Jonathan, take us out. We love you. We'll see you next time.